Okay, this lesson is the climax of the entire chapter. Uh, in this chapter, just as a review for you um, audibly here, we have looked at how to multiply and divide fractions and we've come up with some really key ideas, particularly in the last two sections about multiplying and dividing fractions. Also, in the introduction of this chapter, we reviewed how to add and subtract fractions. So the complicating part of this section is what we're going to do is put all of those things together in one long expression, as well as deal with word problems, uh, which won't be covered in this lesson, but you'll see uh, throughout your assignments uh, to deal with these. So we are specifically are going to be looking at how do we multiply, divide, add, and subtract fractions all within the same long expression. So here's uh, three things to remember and to keep in mind to keep this a little bit more simple and straightforward. Uh, it's always also good to work very in, in very organized fashion down your paper. Okay, and I'll be modeling for that for you as well here. So uh, to apply fraction operations to a math expression, the first thing you are going to want to do, and I'll show you this here in a second, is you are going to want to change mixed, and whole, mixed numbers and whole numbers into improper fractions. Oops. Okay, so what I'm identifying, and we're going to do this one question here. Uh, I'm going to work kind of at the same speed or the same, yeah, the same speed that we're doing the steps in. But what I notice here is here's a whole number, here's an improper fraction, or sorry, a mixed number, and here's another mixed number. So it says any whole numbers or mixed numbers make into improper fractions. So I'm going to, and you, what you'll see me doing here is working down the page, uh, and it's always valuable if you're feeling like you sort of understand what's going on, it's always valuable to maybe pause this and try it on your own. Uh, we learn the best in mathematics by making mistakes and learning from our mistakes. So uh, two I can make into two over one. One and three quarters is the same as one times four plus three, so that's seven quarters. Uh, five over six is a proper fraction. We can just leave that alone. And then one and two thirds becomes five thirds. So there's the first step or the first thing that we want to do when we're dealing with fractions. And what you'll notice here is now this all looks like proper fractions or improper fractions. And you'll notice later on that that is probably the easiest way to deal with fraction operations. Okay? So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing to identify is the order of operations. We don't always just do uh, go from left to right as we see them come up. So we're not necessarily going to be doing this adding first. And uh, if you know your order of operations, you would know that that's not the one we're doing first. So the first thing that you want to do is, and some of your previous teachers or lessons may have noticed that this is called bed mass. That's the order of operations. So any operations in brackets, we would like to do first. And then what we do, we're not going to do any exponents. So the E for bed mass, we don't do in this particular chapter. Uh, we do next divide and multiply. Actually happen at the same time from left to right. So when we look at the dividing and multiplying, we go to the one that's the furthest to the left first. And that actually makes an important difference uh, if you do it incorrectly. And the last two letters of bed mass are A and S, and that stands for add and subtract. And we're going to add and subtract from left to right last. Okay. So let me identify for you. When we're looking at this line here, we have four operations that we're looking at. We've got this green adding. We have this pink multiplication. Uh, we also have this purple subtracting. And we finally have this orange dividing. Now, if we think about bed mass, the first thing we have to do is if there's any operations in brackets. So we're actually going to be doing <coughs> this operation. And for those who've never been organized, the thing to do is identify the operation that you'd like to simplify first and put it in a box and then remember your rules. So uh, we're going to continue this problem in a second. But yeah, that bracket operation, that subtracting there is going to happen first. So last thing to do is to remember the rules. And the rules for you to remember are when you're multiplying, it's simply top times top and bottom times bottom. So that's the rule for multiplying. Uh, the thing to remember for dividing, and we did this in the previous section, <coughs>
and I used a rhyme for this. So dividing fractions is easy as pi. Flip the second and multiply. It's called multiplying by the reciprocal. And adding and subtracting actually tend to be uh, the longer and more difficult operations because of the following. You first of all need a common denominator. So uh, let's approach all these and this entire question now. And you might want to pause this, try some things on your own, and, and always be up for a challenge and asking questions. So first thing we want to do is that subtracting operation that's in the brackets. And I notice here that because it's subtracting, we need a common denominator. Those denominators are not the same. Okay, 4 and 6 both go into 12. To make 4 into 12, we times by 3. So we times the top and bottom by 3, and that becomes 21 because 7 times 3 is 21 over 12 because 4 times 3 is 12. And the second fraction, what do we want to multiply that by to make it a common denominator? If your answer is 2, you're correct. So the top, the numerator, 5 times 2 is 10, and the denominator is 12. And the thing to remember about adding and subtracting denom or fractions is once you've got a common denominator, that denominator doesn't change. So 21 over 12 minus 10 over 12 is essentially subtracting the numerators. So 21 minus 10 is 11 twelfths. Okay? So we have just done the subtracting fraction part of this question. And the next thing that I want to do, for those who like to keep organized, is just bring everything that doesn't have a box around it down to the next line so we can identify what to do next. Okay? These questions can take a long time and they don't favor the disorganized um, person very well. So here we go. So the next operation that we're going to do before we actually tackle this problem, we have to identify the operation. We now have three of them. We've got adding, we've got multiplying, and we've got dividing. So with bed mass, we know that dividing and multiplying go from left to right. So when you look at this, this multiplying and that dividing, you have to do the operation that's further to the left. So even though bed mass has the D first, because the multiplying is further to the left, that's the next operation that we're going to do. So I'm going to put a box around it, and we're going to do that next. What's the rule for multiplying? Do you need a common denominator? And the answer to that is no, you don't. For multiplying fractions, you just simply have to multiply top times top and bottom times bottom. And you can see that here in step three. Okay, so it's a little bit of a longer lesson here. So top times top, which is 2 times 11. Bottom times bottom, which is 1 times 12, that's going to become 22 over 12. Okay? So we just simplified <coughs> that multiplying question. So everything that doesn't have a box around it, bring it down. We're slowly simplifying operations as we go. Okay? So the last two operations that we have to look at here are either this adding or this dividing. So the first thing I'd like to ask you is which of those operations should we do first? And bed mass, again, says that dividing and multiplying come before adding. So in this scenario, we are going to be simplifying and put a box around it. It makes it easier. This dividing question. What do you remember about dividing fractions? First of all, you have to remember that the big idea here is to flip the second and multiply. So don't divide top by top and bottom by bottom. We need to flip the second and multiply. Okay, and now multiplying is just top times top and bottom times bottom. So 22 times 3 is 66, and 12 times 5 is 60. If you would like to, you could reduce these as you go. So uh, those of you who understand what I mean by reduce, you could reduce, 6 goes into each of those, you could reduce that to 11 over 10 before moving on to your next step. In fact, it would make the mathematics much easier, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to bring down the last operation, and we've simplified three out of the four operations, so we now have to simplify the final operation, which is adding. Now, what do you remember about adding? So this is quite challenging. Uh, for adding, we should remember that we need a common denominator. So 60 is our common denominator. 5 goes into 60 12 times, so now what we could do here is multiply this fraction by 12 because 2 times 12 is 24, 5 times 12 is 60, and that's 66 over 60, 
So again, for adding and subtracting, we need a common denominator. And now that denominator remains the same. And 24 plus 66 is 90. So our answer is 90 over 60. That took a lot of work, a lot of time. Uh, and now we can reduce this into lowest terms. So 90 divided by 10 is 9. 60 divided by 10 is 6. You might notice we can divide those by 3. So this becomes 3 over 2. That is our reduced best answer. Okay?